My name is Ernest van Vreek and today we'd like to play a little bit with wizardry and alarming options inside System Platform 2020. So I have a template there, it's a simple template, it's got a set point, uh, it's got a PV that's currently been historized and this is the one we want to play with. We want to enable some limit alarms on there and we want to enable that in the instances using wizards and seeing how we can determine which alarms are enabled and which ones are not. There's a command to log status, which is the running that log status script. There's also a simulation script we can ignore for the moment. And there's a Facebook that goes with the whole thing. Now, a friend of mine, and I won't tell you his name, asked me if we can use some flags to determine whether a specific alarm is enabled. So we create some flags. There's a PV high, high alarm enabled, high, low, etc. And we also create one for the set point. Now, let's open up the wizardry. The first option we have there is simply to enable limit alarms. So if I select the PV limit alarm, I can see how I enable that is I just associate the PV with that and I have to just specify that limit alarms are enabled. So that's the true that you see there. There's also a couple of attributes that are associated with limit alarms in general and I make them both visible so that if someone wants to configure them at a later stage, they can do that. We also associate the script and we associate the faceplate with that uh, selection. Then we go to the different selections. We've got high, high, for instance, in there. And if I look at the PV value there, all I've done is in the specific setting, I've specified high alarm to be true. And I make the associated variables or attributes visible as well. And then we associate this Boolean flag. This PV high, high alarm enabled, I associate and I specify to be true in high, high. And we can do the same kind of thing for high. I associate the high alarm enabled, specify to be true. And of course, for the PV, we have to then enable high alarm and make its associated attributes visible. And we do the same kind of thing for the low, and we do the same kind of thing for the low, low as well. So the point here is that if we make a selection, that any one of these ones select, it will set the PV's correct alarm limits. But it will also go and specify that specific Boolean flag to be true if that specific type of alarming has been specified. We also have a specific option for set points. So we have a set point itself there associated and there's a boolean flag that says that set point is existing. In this template, we can just use those boolean flags to determine which alarms are enabled and we can lock the limit as well as whether it's in alarm or not. Of course, the limit is always existing, but the in alarm bit does not exist for a specific limit if that limit is not enabled. So this script will show errors in design time. If we look in the symbol, we'll see there's a lot of custom properties there, and they reference the template attributes. We've got the PV and all of the other things in there, as well as the limits and whether an alarm is in alarm or not in alarm. We also have custom properties that represent those Boolean flags of us that will tell us whether a high alarm or a low alarm has been enabled, and they're called high enabled and low enabled. To use them, we just add them as visibility. So if I want to do that, I can just add a visibility for high enabled. Uh, I can do the same for value displays, and I can add other animations in there. For these little triangles on the side that indicates my states, uh, I can do that as well, enable them, but that means I have to do that for every single one of them. If we look at how the script is done, we've got a separate script here that will also log the status, and this time from the graphics side. It's very easy. It uses a command status that's a local variable that's inside the graphic only. And of course, we can use those high enabled, high high enabled, and do the same kind of thing we did in the object script. Of course, these custom properties reference attributes that don't always exist. Some instances do not have high high limits configured or low low limits configured. And that will throw us warnings in design time. So if I look at that first object here, it doesn't have any limits configured, nor does it have a set point. So it's throwing us warnings in design time. This object only has two of them configured, so it's throwing us warnings for the other two. And notice that it throws the warning in both the script as well as the graphic. So we've got to ask ourselves, is there a better way of doing this? Is there a way that won't throw warnings? So let's first look at what we can do in the symbol. We enable symbol wizards. Now symbol wizards allow me to go and create options in the symbol as well. So we can create a high, low, and high, high. And this will automatically create us some layers. And in these layers, you can go and assign elements of the symbol if you want. And you can also do things like scripts and custom properties if you want. But you can pick and choose which ones of the elements will be visible when which option is selected. So if you want the high text and high value to only be visible when the high option is selected, you simply drag it in there, which means you don't have to use visibility animations anymore. For these little alarm indicator triangles, I'm going to follow a slightly different route. If we don't want to go and assign every one of those triangles to a layer in my wizards, then I can use faceplate mode. Now, this is not my preferred method, but faceplate mode is an easy way of hiding stuff that is incorrectly configured. So what faceplate mode will do is if it finds something that doesn't have a valid value, it's going to hide it for us. 
Now, there's some things we need to take into account when you do that. The in alarm attribute of a limit alarm doesn't exist if that limit is not configured. So we have to use set custom property value to set that in runtime. Otherwise, the faceplate mode will just kill everything that references that custom property. This also means that in scripting, we cannot use custom properties that reference attributes that may not exist because then the script will just not run like that in alarm. We have to use an indirect to bind to the in alarm attributes and then we test if it's good. If it's good, we know that that specific limit has been configured and we can appropriately script to it. So how do we use this inside the template? Well, the first part is the same as the previous object. We still have our overall selection to enable the limit alarms. But what we've done now is for the individual limits, we also add the symbol. And the symbol's wizard is also exposed. The rest of it is the same. So I still have my PV and the PV is still enabled for high, high alarm, for high and for low. But I can now also add the symbol in there and have the symbol wizard to have the corresponding limit enabled. In the scripting, we use the same trick that we used in the symbol. We use indirects. We declare them in the declaration box. So I retain the value between execution. In runtime, we test whether they're good. That will tell us if the limit's enabled. And, and on scan, we just go and assign them to the specific in alarm. To show this, we use the content presenter and we just drop the two types of objects into two lists in content presenter. And this is what it looks like in runtime. I've hit the preview again so it would execute once this on show so we can see all of the errors that's getting thrown by the first version of the template because we haven't taken precaution against that. So I'm going to mark here as well just to show you that the scripting still executes as it should. Uh, and we're going to hit the different scripts in there to log the object status for the original version of the template. And you can see that's what it looks like. It shows me that which ones are configured and what their values are. And then with the improved version, it doesn't throw any warnings in design time or in runtime. You can see it still gives me the same value. So the whole point of this exercise was to go and show you how to use limit alarms inside wizards.